Hello, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, we're inside a particularly special car. This has just been released. It came with update 1.49. It's the... I'm going to say this correctly, even with my dodgy voice. It's the roof Porsche. 4.2. And whatever else. We've played with it a little bit. We've played with it a lot. It's, um... It's been tricky to get it anywhere near where it needs to be to get this to win this race, the, the race being Tokyo 600. And let's take you to the settings. We've managed to get this to win the race at 599.86 pp against the target of 600 and the max power in at 573. Now, there's also a little bit of a glitch, but it's not really a glitch because we don't use it but it's something that doesn't actually work well with the game. It, I don't think it should actually be this way, but we'll, we'll show you that when we get to it. Comfort softs, fully customizable suspension, nothing changed, everything default. Fully customizable rear diff set to the Magic 555. Downforce is trimmed to 203 on the front, 450 on the rear. Normal ECU, which of course is going to be 100%. The power restrictor set to 71. As you can see, the torque curve there is really quite linear. It's quite direct until around about 6,000 RPM. Now, I've had a conversation with one of my, one of our viewers, and he's, he's very intelligently pointed out that if you go to the intro screen, which we can do now, you can see that the max power and the max torque is set there at 8,000. RPM 8,800 to 6,300 RPM. So if you're using a particular turbocharger, for example, one that uh, requires a short shift, they're good indicators for where you should change gear. As long as, as long as you're changing into the power band where you can deliver the power. If you've got a turbocharged car where the boost doesn't come in until 4,000 RPM and you're dropping the car into 2,000 RPM, the bottom of the gear, you're going to get all that lag. So you have to apply things like anti-lag, etc. to get away with it. But it's just an aside. It was just a very interesting point he raised. And um, I think it's one that deserves greater discussion on another more suitable car. But it's, it's worthwhile just pointing it out now. As you can see, any gear change here at any particular point, would, would not really upset the car any great deal. It will still power all the way through to basically 6,000 RPM, 6,300. Transmission, therefore, is set to manual customizable at 310. Everything is default, nothing has changed. Turbocharger is the high RPM. If we go to the mid medium, you see the PP doesn't change a massive amount. It just means you'd have to change the gear change. Accordingly, as you can see, it doesn't change anything too much on on the actual power band, but you do drop about 10, 10 power. Now, there's no intercooler. Air cleaner is set to normal. Silencer is set to sports. Exhaust manifold is normal. Brake system normal. Brake pads racing. We've got the brake controller. We've got engine balance tuning installed. Polish ports, high lift camshaft, and increased body rigidity. And I fully appreciate you'll know by now I am suffering with the worst cold that makes me bark like a dog. So please excuse that as we just go through this setup. So on the front, we're going to take the Type A. On the side, the Type A. On the rear, the Type A is quite ugly, but... I like it covered up, but we'll take the Taipei for what it gives us. The wing on the rear is the Taipei, and the PP is where it is. Racing items, no roll cage available, and we haven't put any racy stuff on. On the front grille, though, we have taken the Taipei, taken those ducks out and those headlamp washers. Don't really want them today. It's raining enough as it is. Wheels. We have equipped the GTR, mm, it's the NK Racing Revolution GTC 01RRs. 
that's what we've got fitted. And I believe they are um, wide, wide on a 20 inch. Wide, wide. Yes, they are. So here we are, we've arrived at the track. It's a wet day. As always, it seems here to be quite wet. Settings for the race, assist, traction control one, ABS default, counter seer assistance on strong. Controller settings, nothing's changed in the last couple of days, so force feedback, max torque seven, force feedback sensitivity ten. Now, as I suggested, there's a bit of a glitch. The glitch is the fact that we've got the normal ECU, but it's giving us engine maps. Now, I, I, I don't know whether it's my brain and not feeling 100% well, but I believed you only got those if you bought and installed the ECU, the customizable ECU, and if you change back to normal, you don't get those. Now, can, can you correct me or, or, or back me up here and say, it's actually wrong and it shouldn't be that way? But anyway, we're going to dive into this. We're going to show you how to win this race. This is a toughie, folks. It takes a little bit of doing. I've seen online people suggesting that the easiest way to do this is drop too easy. And I would back that up. But I've raced this race on hard. Sorry, on hard every time I've ever done this. And I don't want to drop too easy. So please forgive me. I'm going to try and do this the hard way. But uh, let's see where we go. So first thing we do, just double check brake balance is on minus three, three to the front. And then we're going to charge down here. As you can see, we're on the normal ECU, but we've got the engine maps. I don't know if that is actually should be, as I explained. So somebody can just reassure me and tell me I'm not going crazy. Although I could be with all these drugs. Let's charge down the outside here. Let's try and get clear of as many as we can. Let's get in front of this Jaguar if we can. Hard on the brakes at 200. Back to third gear. We got as low as second. We're going to try and... Charge our way through the pack as much as possible. Tiny little bump on Mr. Beauvoir there. Let's squeeze up the inside if we can here. Mr. Yamanaka. Going to try and do the same thing to you. I apologise. Third gear for this entry. And fourth gear to get out of it. And we're going to be charging hard now. Mr. Blas and the next target. That's where it needs to be. It needs to be a target. We need to chase him down to make sure we're as smooth as we can through these corners no touching curbs fourth gear seems to be the gear that makes the car rotate and all my mods have arrived for my kit my pedals I've just got to find an ample time to get them fitted I'm not in the best of fettle at the moment so I'm trying to focus all my efforts on keeping things going at home and at work and also making sure my missus is still looked after so these videos are being done late at night into the early hours of the morning at a time where I know she's sleeping and resting and also when I'm able to find the solutions because some of these are not easy so we're into seventh place at the end of lap one Charging hard, we've got seven litres, seven laps of fuel, which is great. These, cus these, cus these comfort softs are uh, trying to do as well as they can. We're going to push them as hard and long as we can. We're going to try and get to lap seven if we can. Do one more than the standard stop because we want the second set of tyres racing in the dry to be that little bit better at the end of the race. These tyres are going to last a bit longer because of the wet. We're also carrying more fuel in this part of the race so the second half of the race we're gonna try and take less fuel we're gonna have to take the same amount of fuel but we're gonna try and carry a lot less fuel maybe five laps less and we're gonna try and push the car as far as we can 
I've never really discussed this before in any race. But what do we think the time is, the minimum slowest lap time you need to be able to win this race? What's the fastest slowest lap time, if that's a silly question? So, I've always believed the car that can do a 2.10 can win this race. I've honestly not got this car to do a 2.10 yet. And I haven't actually won this race. I'm speculating based on a couple of tests test races and test laps that I've done where I've never got to the end but I reckon this setup is now good enough to do the win you can see the car's done 113 miles and that's probably three full length races but I've not finished one yet as you know with these cars whether they're going to win or not as A, you get far enough up on the uh, cars on the first lap, and then you've got to be able to catch the cars on the straight. And if you can't catch them, you're done for. So, Mr. Blazan, we've already passed you once. We're going to put you behind us now. And we know we're going to chase you, and you're going to chase us for the next couple of laps. So, let's keep it hard, mate. Let's keep it going. There's a 212, 611. So Swillow's already put in a 209. We know he's the guy to chase. We know Gallo's going to stop twice. We know Cookerbun's going to be racing hard. We're in sixth. Braga and Hazal in front of us. Going to break just after the 200. The 555 really helps the car get into the corner. But it also slows the car out the corner as well a little bit because it gives you that much more stable input at the throttle and maybe people could be faster without it but I can assure you on a car that likes to dance around all over the place the 555 is going to help fix your woes especially if you're not as good driver like me you know I'm pretty rubbish when it comes to these kind of things about handling a car that's pretty active I I prefer to rely on a couple of settings to fix that kind of thing. And the ones I've found that do it are 555 and counter steer and traction control. But three cars in front of us now, we're gaining. Hookabun is critical to be one that we are catching. He's there in front of, of his Alfraga. There's actually Suswillow. Suswillow has just disappeared around the corner. I'm hoping these three cars in front are really going to get together a little bit. I think I can break a little bit later. I'm sort of breaking around about the 200 at the minute. But I think I want to break about the 180. So we're getting the lap time down into roughly the 2.11s. The ice has melted in my drink. There's a 2.11.9. So kind of a whole second away from where I want the car to be to be able to win the race at this point. So. We know cars with fastest laps of 209 definitely do it. Much better entry to the corner there. Now again, I do have to give a massive shout out to Mr. Ridley. Mr. Ridley actually put together a couple of setups for me to test and try. And I have to say, unfortunately, I've tried them both and I've tried mixtures of both of them and I just can't get on with, with the kind of adjustments he's made. Um, 
I've had to revert the suspension back to standard with without any tweaks. He was basically trying to soften up the suspension and take the stiffness out of it and try to top the star sliding. Uh, but uh, it didn't work for me, so massive shout out to Mr. Ridley for, for what you've done, my friend. Appreciate it. I've always told you with your help, it, it's a much easier job, so thank you very, very much for giving me the support and assistance that I need to get through these. They are sometimes not easy, but this is definitely the hardest one I've had to do. Definitely the hardest one of these we've had to do. So now we're lining up lap four. We know next lap Gallo's going to the pit, so four cars in front of us are carrying on. Now we're really into the draft now. We're into the overrun of the, uh, the gearbox. Here we go, we're going to charge up onto the back end of his out. And Cookaboom, we're going to take the outside line. We're going to break on the 200 and see where that takes us. In front of the 22B of his L. Onto the back door of Cookaboom and a little bit of a drafty slidey. And we can see how fast Cookaboom is, look. In the RX7 Amenia. So we are just going to uh, slide up to the back of him in the bit where we know we can. We are normally significantly quicker than the AI on any track where there's twisty bits. We touch the wall. We're also gaining on Sus Willow here. I'm just looking at my rear tyres thinking, oh damn. They're, um, they're looking a little bit saucy. That's why it's because we're pushing them a bit hard in the slide, so... Rookerman's going to be a late breaker into here, so we're going to gamble on the 175. and keep him wide. Then we're going to chase down Sus Willow. So our only issue now is, is tyre standard, tyre qualities. The tyres are really where, where we could let ourselves down. We can still pit on six, but I think I'd really like to pit on the end of seven. Gallo's gone to the pits then, he's taking. Good thing about that is we know Gallo's got to stop twice, so. Cookerman's now a whole second behind us. Just Willow's just pulled out to three. But our task now is to reel Sus Willow in through the twisties. We know that car of Sus Willow's is exceptionally fast. But we also know we're not racing Suswillow. So Suswillow's got to take a shed load of fuel. So if we can if we can get this to last just a couple more laps. We can we can traumatize Suswillow a little bit. I'm down to a second. is lap six. I think we're definitely going to want to go one more. Here we go. On the 75. Leaving fourth gear to try and encourage the turn in. Beautiful. Yeah, we're going to go one more lap. Now we have the lead. It's ours to lose. 
Kukupan's got past the Swillow as well. Now this is the race. This is this is the decision maker. Are we going to make him go to the pits? Does he need to pit? Is he going to pit? Is any of them going to pit? Neither of them are going to pit. So Swillow's going to be faster. We're going to be quicker than the RX. Let's hope the RX is going to uh, just hold up so Swillow that little bit. And then the race is on. We've got the fuel. This has got to be our last lap. So Swillow's coming past. He's going to charge now. He's going to have the gander. They both get us under braking. And a bit of dory door. Mano and mano. That was bumper on bumper. I was probably a little bit ambitious of me on that process, being not really alongside his door to make the turn in, but he did close on me, so he knew I was there and he knew what he was doing. There was plenty of room, he didn't have to turn in. He just wanted to shut the door, so... This is definitely the inlet because we haven't got the fuel to last anymore. So Swillow's got the gander on, hasn't he? Definitely. Glad both sides of the uh, bridge then. That was a little bit of a mistake. Right, we want 5.2 laps of fuel in the pits. And we want the soft tyres. I don't want to make the same mistake I made in the league race the other day. We're going to go in behind Suswillo. We've got to chase these boys. We're going to race them the other side. We're in. Taking the softs. He had zero fuel. Look. Zero. We had 11, Kukabun had 15, his house come in with 3, Fraga's come in with 9. You see the little diamond that says how much fuel we need, we need 5.2. Let's see how accurately Gallo's gone past us. 5.2 wasn't far off what it says, was it? Larzan's gone past, Gallo's gone past. Cookabun is behind us. Cookabun's come out of the pits. So Swillow's out as well. So we're in third place, but we have what is the opportunity to now go on and win this. So no mistakes from this point in. The break on the 150. Break that a little bit later because we were down on speed because we've come out of the pit lane. Got to make use of all that grip on the tyres now. Brand new tyres. Carrying a little bit more fuel than we did. Our fastest lap is a 2.11.388. Faster through the twisties. No clipping any walls, Jimbo. Come on. using third gear there just to bring it in fourth gear to power out what we're hoping to do is try and put a bit of a gap between us and Booker Bonanza's Willow if we can do that we're good The only place 
Puckerman really is going to get an advantage on us. He's under braking. He hasn't got the top speed. Larzan's gone to the pits. As we go through the start finish line, that was our out lap complete. We're now on setting lap time. So 2.11.388 to beat. Car went very light at that point. I'm going to still take the wide line, but I know Cookman's going to dive down the inside. I'm going to break about 175. Blocked me coming out there. This has got to be one of the best races ever. It's got my brain thinking. It's got pushing my driving limits to the edge it really is asking me to do a lot with a car that's been really difficult to set up I mean this isn't any groundbreaking setup at all but it's just suits my driving style allowing the car to slide and probes roll when it wants to and I haven't got any intention of doing anything bad to the AI at this point. I don't want him to go away from me. I want his draft down the straight. Suswillow's nine seconds back, so we've broke the back of Suswillow. Look how fast he went into there. Look at that line he took. That's unbelievable speed. Look at him go. Look at him go. Holy hell. Gallo's gone to the pits then. This has got to be the fastest lap of the race. Look at him go. That was absolutely unbelievable acceleration. That was a 208.054. Holy hell, we did a 210-669, which, which confirms you need to be in the 210s to be able to win this race. We've got to get him. We've got two laps to do that. We can't let him have that kind of pace. Again, we've got to catch him and put paid to that. That is that's scary just how fast he was there. That's not something I was anticipating. Not at this point of the race. I thought he was done. I thought he had given everything he can give. I thought we were at the point of just having to be able to put our toe down and and deliver the power with some clean laps. But what it's actually proved is he's put on some decent tyres and he's running for it. We're just finding the edge of every surface of the track at this point. Let's hope. He's burnt a lot of fuel and he's got to uh, back off a bit. I just don't want him to go away like an absolute trooper. Like he did last lap. That's going to break my heart. gone again hasn't he absolutely thraped it where's he got that power from he's never had that power on previous laps never we've just been a fraction behind our fastest lap there another 210 so now we've got to put that in this lap Tires are looking good. Fuel, we've got enough. We haven't got anything more to give the car, so we've got no magic dial, no boost button, no nothing. So all we've got is 
to be able to play with the breaking point that just a little bit much if we don't want to try and overcook it we've got to see if we can close in on him he is doing a tremendous job of keeping ahead of us now he made a mistake there didn't he We just took him by surprise. Now we're going to have to, uh, we're going to have to play cagey coming out of this final corner. We're going to have to block him. We're going to have to arrest that uh, acceleration. We can't let him go into that final lap with that much overspeed. I'm going to have to manoeuvre once, twice, three times. There we go. Just covered the line if he was going to take the pits, but we know he isn't. This is it then, final lap. Gallo's in third. So Swillow fourth, Fraga fifth, Blaza sixth, Isel seventh, Beauvoir. No, A. Grady is now into eighth. Going to break on the 200. We're going to expect Cookabun to come up the inside. Touches our back end. He's not going to give it in. And it's going to be a race to the finish, isn't it? That final corner, we know it is. Unless we can really start to show a clean pair of heels through here. The yeah, tyres are good. That extra lap on the first stint was enough to give us the extra usage that we need on this set of tyres. As the track's dry, there's nothing to make them last longer. Ooh! We've got some distance on Cookabun now, that was lucky. Got a little bit of cramp in my right foot. That's the throttle pedal. And we're just modulating that as we go through there. He's not giving up, you know, he's still there, catbird seat. He's still looking at us, he's still wanting this. actually got that breaking point refined down to 175 we've run wide we're going to give him the left side of the track coming down to the pit lane entry he's going to have to go to the left we're going to make our one defensive move which is pull over to the entrance of the pit lane and force him to go wide and here we have it folks 0.2 laps of fuel at the end. We've done it. We've only gone and won it. Happy days. That has not been easy. That has been a good, solid four hours of development. And thank you very much, Mr. Ridley, for your help in that. There they are, pair going through the finish line now. The roof 4.2. The RX Amenia. The fastest lap of the race to Kukabuna, 208.054. But a winning time of 27.03. That's got to be the slowest win time I've ever had. But it's still a win. It chalks it up and it's not easy. But I do, I do honestly think that's a real good challenge. And that, that really does make the grind. I know it's slow, but it's still inside half an hour. You can still do it twice in an hour. Still get a new drink, still get a pee. And everybody's happy. And I apologize for my voice. Clean race bonus. 
And absolutely, it makes it a winner, doesn't it? Clean race bonus, clean as you like, job done, everyone's a winner. Oh, yeah, that makes you feel good. There's the 75 million again after we bought all those upgrades and shedded them. And, and there you have it, folks. And a four star ticket for tomorrow. You're going to see this video in a couple of days and uh, I do look forward to your feedback. And any more suggestions if anybody's got any. I've done the Volvos. The two Volvos don't cut it. Not good enough. I'm going to have to really work hard on them. I haven't brought the new Honda Civic. Honda Civic? Honda NSX here yet. Uh, I think it's a race car and it's not going to fairly fit in with what we're trying to do. But it might be worth just a fill-in video. But with that, folks, thank you very much. We'll see you on the next one. All the best. Take care. Goodbye for now.